and welcome back to RPG. I'm the guest Lacey, and we're on part four of Final Fantasy IX. We just kidnapped, air quote, the princess, and fought with Steiner. Yes, and now uh, it's time to it's time to blow this joint. Our cover's blown. We need to get out of here. I don't think the queen has totally figured it out yet, though, has she? I don't think so because. Well, last we saw, she was bawling her head off, but, uh, uh well, nah, I, I think she knows now. <laughs> oh, she's about to. I, I love that they have those giant harpo chain harpoons just all set right at the throne to fire outwards. Well, they have the queen there. I, I guess. Yeah. And I like how she's attacking it and not caring at all that she might hurt her daughter. <laughs> we'll learn a little more about that later. But all these poor people who are watching the play on the roof. Oh, their houses are being destroyed. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Someone tackled Steiner in the background. I don't know if you caught that. <laughs> I did. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. Oh, boy. It's a big bomb! It is indeed a bomb, a recurring enemy from the Final Fantasy series. One of my favorites. Oh, really? You like you like things that... I like the little bombs. They're very annoying if you're in their AoE, but they're cute. <laughs> Steiner and the bomb. Really? Yeah, well, kind of. You can't target the bomb, and Steiner, he, he's stupid. <laughs> I am really grateful for having Garnet, because I can't imagine this fight without the healing. Yeah, oh, I mean, very frustrating is how easily they take damage. Yeah, well, there are level one, and we have two mages as half of the party at this point. But uh, fun fact, you can actually get up and go make a sandwich, and this fight will end the same way. Good to know. Yeah, you don't actually have to do anything. Oh, sure, like three of your characters are going to die, but... Which three? Uh, I don't know. Whatever. Three Steiner likes to attack. <laughs> I don't see him attacking Garnet. He will not ever attack Garnet. And that's actually going to be a running theme for a few bosses for a little while. Good to know. Because, I mean, like, why, why, why would he try to chop her in half? I don't know. He's a little stupid. Uh, he is pretty stupid, but I don't think he's quite that stupid. He could be. He, I, I guess. I really don't know why we still have, we're still stuck with the special effects command for this part because we're we're trying to get away. We're not putting on a show for people anymore. Mm -hmm. Anyway, the bomb is about to explode because that's what the bomb enemies do. Boom. Like that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, unfortunately, we all she died. She sure does not seem to care about her people or anyone but herself. <laughs> Again, we'll learn more about that. I didn't comment on, it on or comment on it when we first saw it, but that, I don't know what you call it, hood ornament <laughs> on the airship. The mermaid with the angel wings? Yeah, that confuses me. Why is it a mermaid with angel wings? No idea. I was gonna ask you that. <laughs> well, the good news is we survived and we're escaping. This is true. The bad news is. As one test off queen. Yeah. The, the the bad news is we're not getting very far. <laughs> I wish he'd let us turn the engine thing now, huh? Yeah, really. If we would have had to gotten to keep the power cranked up, maybe we could have gotten away. Yeah. But, <laughs> I love the two guys who just fall from the ceiling. Yay. But, yeah, the theater ship that we were on, it's going down. It's toast. Oh, yeah. And, uh, I'm, I'm sure everyone's okay, right? Okay, 
sounds ominous. Yeah, yeah. Queen Brand's the Queen Brand Braun, however you say her name. Her theme is super, super ominous. Uh, ominous. Ominous. She, she's kind of creepy. She is. Uh, her hat is also kind of confusing. Terminate her. Hot. Well, even they think it'd be okay to kill her. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they don't have the the. the I feel like maybe she's her stepmom. Because that sounds like a stepmommy thing to do. Like, you know, the evil stepmoms in video games? Those are the kind of ones you hear about. <laughs> they do stuff like that. Well, it's just, it's just a guess on my part. I have no idea. This is true. Lacey actually does have no idea, folks. I've never beat the game. Never even got halfway through it. Nope. She's gotten about a fourth of the I'll way. I'll probably through. go back and play it soon now. Cause I'm, well, I mean, I have to after this video. Ha, 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 ha. it all. <laughs> well, I mean, we're going to talk about this a little bit later. I don't want to talk about it right now. But uh, we'll get into Lacey's reasonings for why she didn't get back into it. But for now, the fire's out of control. And uh, Baku tells everybody to quit their whining. Gotta get the wounded out. He seems like a much better le leader than King Leo was. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Baku, he comes off as an idiot, but he's actually really competent at what he does. That's good. You're, you can be an idiot, but be a competent idiot. <laughs> yeah, I mean, look at me. That's what I say. No comment. <laughs> <laughs> I... I, I love this coming up. It's actually one of my favorite moments in the early game of, of Final Fantasy IX. Where it's just chucking each other on these columns? Yeah, for chucking for reference, those two guys that they just threw on top of each other, they're not dead. They're just injured. That's great. Yeah, uh, I, I find it hilarious. Bedside manner is not a thing for Sina. Well, they're, 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 they're thieves, not doctors. They're also good play, right? Yeah, or, what do you call it? Not a play, right? Uh, actors. Yeah, they are they are indeed also actors. Which, we'll, we'll learn a little more about that when we get to a certain city. But, for right now, they're saying that they couldn't find Princess Garnet in all the rubble. And uh, this Moogle said something about eating. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Active time event. This is actually probably my favorite thing in Final Fantasy IX, is how they handle these active time events. Hmm. Um, I, so the way... I, I remember them being okay. Huh? I recall them being okay-ish. Well, the reason they're my favorite is because it's a very good way to see stuff going on with other characters without it making the story feel super disjointed. At, at least in my opinion. You gotta also remember, this is a game from the PS1 era. This is true. Of course, though, that's also a bit of a crutch to say that, because, I mean, eh. But, whatever. Yeah, see, the trumpeter who's on the bottom, he's, he's telling the other guy to get off of him. And I, I find that hilarious. Okay, so we've already seen this before, but I only showed saving the one time at, like, the actual save menu. I'm going to be cutting that out from now on because, well, you guys don't need me to... You don't need to see me selecting save. <laughs> That's, like, 30, 40 seconds that you guys just don't need to yes, see. Yes, please show me how to save over and over and over and over and over. No, I will not. At this point, because we can start getting AP which we'll go into later, uh, you want to make sure you're equipping stuff. The Mage Masher is two potency stronger than the Dagger, and it has the same ability and detect. Those are two of the very best abilities for Zidane. And uh, even though I don't equip it here, you should equip the Silk Shirt, which I'll explain. Well, I'll, I'll talk about in the later part for why. We don't need to worry about it right now. <clears throat> and then there's abilities. Abilities are really important in Final Fantasy IX. There are two types of abilities, usable abilities and passive abilities. Passive abilities cost, well, ability crystals to equip. You can change them at any time that you want, equip and unequip them, but you can only use so many crystals that you have available. 
It's really important to keep track of... Oh my gosh, Lacey. The evil forest. The evil oh, the forest. Frog. But, but, Lacey, more, more importantly... <laughs> oh, oh, it's a frog, 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 it's a frog. Okay. <laughs> I am not amused. <laughs> what? It is Vivi. He's he's terrified. Like really terrified. Which who can blame him? It's scary. <laughs> and we find Steiner yelling at this plant monster. All right, so That's I. That's not any plant monster. I'm sorry, what? That's not just any plant monster. Sorry, Claw, I had struggled with this one. <laughs> okay, so. I believe I died two or three times. So, let's talk. All right. We have a couple of things to talk about because not to spoil too much. We're going to be fighting this thing twice. So, instead, I want to talk about trance that we're getting into right now. Before we get too far into it, trance is like the limit breaks, overdrives, whatever you want to call it, of other Final Fantasy games, except in Final Fantasy IX, it's trance. This is a reference to Final Fantasy VI. But this changes the character's stats for certain commands and actually completely alters their commands. Uh, in Zidane's case, it turns his skill command slot into dying. Now, even though we have access to Tidal Flame, do not use that, you will get a game over. <laughs> why would you get a game over? Because you... Oh, I remember why. Because that's how I died the first time. Yeah. So, here's the deal. The thing about this fight is that you have to keep Garnet alive inside of that little plant bowl prison thing. This monster's going to keep absorbing health from her. And if she runs out of HP, well, she's dead and that's a game over. Now, in case you're worried about stealing stuff from this boss, this boss doesn't have anything you can steal. You'd just be wasting a turn of trance. Trance does not usually last very long. <clears throat> but two free energies and the, the thing will run away. But uh, I mentioned we're going to be fighting this thing again and probably a lot sooner than folks think. Mm -hmm. See, that one's so much better than when I did it. <laughs> well, that's just it. You wouldn't expect right away that, oh, wait, if Garnet dies, then that's a game over. Yeah, giving us the option of a game over so early in the game seems a little much. <laughs> Well, it's just, it's very counterintuitive, but we'll talk a little more about the mechanics because here we go. It's time for the boss again. <laughs> All right. So this one does have stuff you can steal. And I believe I show off why one of these abilities that are tied to the Mage Masher are so important for Zidane. I believe. Also, though, unlike Garnet, Vivi will continually cast fire on this thing. Go, Vivi, go! Yes, I do show. Okay, so the ability detect uh, shows off what is available to steal from, from whatever you use it on. This is really helpful for determining if there's something that you want to actually steal. So, like, this boss carries a leather wrist and a broadsword. The broadsword is the same thing Steiner already has equipped, so it's worthless. But, the leather wrist is a type of armor is a type of wrist armor that we don't have access to yet through other means so we're gonna steal or try to steal it ah <clears throat> so talking about how to get through these fights a little more easily because well like Lacey said she had a bit of a hard time with this so Vivi and Garnet can only this take one was, oh I'm sorry this one was easier because Vivi was attacking it <laughs> yeah this one is indeed easier because Vivi is attacking it and not to spoil too much, Vivi's the one that actually kills this monster. I don't actually do any damage to it. But as I was saying, Vivi and Garnet can only take two absorbs from this boss before they die. So what you can do to counteract this, though, is target Vivi or Garnet with a potion and use it on them. And that'll restore their health to make it so they can take more hits, more absorbs. 
This is a really good tip when for this fight in particular because the previous one just used free energy twice and you win. But uh, in this one, doing that and doing that to prolong how long BB's alive makes it so much easier to get through this and steal this stuff from him. That said, you don't have to do that. You can definitely kill this thing if you try hard enough without using potions on it. Or on Vivi, rather. It is important- I didn't notice that you have to use a lot of potions if Garnet's not in your party. <laughs> yes, and I want to talk about that later because, well, well, we'll see. I'll talk about that later. We don't need to worry about that quite yet. Although I will say we're not going to have Garnet for a little while, but uh, not going to be as big of a deal as you might think. It was a huge deal for me. <laughs> okay, well. Uh. You're, you're good. We'll talk about it later. <laughs> right now you got to kick some plant butt. Does it have a butt? I would think so. But yeah, don't be afraid to use your potions on Vivi. Because it's it's better than him dying and you having to go back to your save file. Which I guess I should mention that. This is the Nintendo Switch version. If you do get a game over, you can select continue, something that was not in the original PlayStation version. And you'll continue off from when you enter the screen. As opposed to the last time you saved. Oh, that's handy. Yeah, that is a good thing to take note of. But with that, we defeated the plant. This time it died because Vivi burned it to death. Good job, Vivi. But uh, something about monsters when they die in the field that uh, is demonstrated right here that they should have taken note of, they vanish when they're actually dead. This plant wasn't actually dead, and so it sprayed this toxic spray stuff onto Steiner and Vivi. Oh no! I remember that. That's so sad. And, uh, as Blank is explaining here, um, what the plant sprayed is actually a bunch of seeds. These seeds will eventually sprout and, well, consume the person that they were planted in. Ooh. Yes, to make more of those monsters. It's actually really gruesome. Luckily, we don't have to see that. That sounds very scary. Yeah, it does sound very scary, and I'm really glad we don't have to see it. <laughs> it also make it also understandably makes the person that they're implanted in really, really, really sick and like really weakened. Hey, it's like all those watermelon seeds your parents got told you not to swallow when you were a kid. <laughs> I remember an episode of the Rugrats about that. <laughs> mm -hmm. Hey, Lacey, look, it's a doll. Doll. <laughs> I remember that doll. <laughs> I said back in part one, we'll learn a little more about it. And indeed, we're going to. Steiner not wanting to trust a band of thieves, which is actually pretty good mentality, to be perfectly honest. Although he... What do you mean? You shouldn't trust people who, you know, kidnap people? Uh, no, not usually. But then again, he doesn't have anything to lose. So he finally just says, screw it. And <laughs> he actually thinks that yeah. the potion doesn't taste too bad. Good to know. And this is where we first get a little bit of insight to what the mist is. The mist is something that breeds monsters out of it. Like, really savage monsters. The more, more savage than your typical monsters... And the mist is all over in the forest. Oh, dear. And so, because they have so many people who are injured from on the ship, Baku thinks it's a smarter idea to stay put until people recover well enough that they're going to be able to defend themselves to escape. Which is actually pretty smart. I gotta say, I think that's the smartest choice he could have made. Also, check to the right right here for some bronze gloves. Very easy to miss. But because Garnet got kidnapped by that plant, she gets kidnapped a lot in the early game. Uh, I have noticed that most uh, female characters, princesses, summoners, whatever, generally get kidnapped a lot. 
Summoner, Lacey, what are you talking about? Final Fantasy X and X-2. <laughs> Oh, no, Lacey, we left you behind. No. <laughs> I don't know how, but we did. <laughs> now that Steiner's starting to feel a little better, not completely, but a little better, he wants to find a way to escape because, well, he wants to go save the princess because why wouldn't he? Because the name thinks she's hot and so does Steiner. <laughs> Because, I'm sorry, what about Steiner? He thought, well, he doesn't think the princess is hot. He might. We don't know about that about him. But he's all like, I must save the princess for the big, fat, ugly queen. <laughs> yeah, I guess we could talk about that. Steiner is a blindingly loyal character. <laughs> and here he's upset because the doll is hideous and it's got princess's age of 15 instead of 16. She just turned 16, though. Uh-huh. Exactly. But, uh, I mentioned we're gonna learn a little more about the doll, and here we go. My little baby active time event. Cinna is looking for his doll. <laughs> Poor Cinna. He loves that doll. A little too much, as we'll find out. But uh, he, he's worried that the fire ate it. The fire got it. <laughs> and now he can't go to sleep because he doesn't have his garnet doll. And he's out there get, being uh, exposed to the mist. <laughs> yeah. Poor Cinna. He He's such a lonely character. So, a, a little note about active time events. They're very finicky to get to activate sometimes. Mm -hmm. There's a specific town a while later in the game that this is the case, and we'll, we'll talk about it more when we get there, because it's not going to be such a big deal for a little while. But anyway, mm -hmm. Blank wants us to go and talk to Vivi, the Black Mage. But uh, first, pillaging. Well, actually, is it really pillaging if it's our group's stuff? Borrowing without asking. Borrowing without asking. Yeah, you think mm -hmm. they'd be okay with it. They're thieves. Ooh, 116 gil. That's pretty nice. Mm -hmm. Also, is that a model airplane? It kind of looks like, looks like a paper airplane. Yeah, that's, that's what I always thought. I'm not sure what it's supposed to be. But this is where Zidane truly meets Vivi and gets a little bit acquainted and finds out that Vivi doesn't like being called little. Imagine that. Short people not being liking being called little. Lacey, you sound like that's from experience. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Although Vivi really shouldn't feel bad because Vivi's one of one of the best characters. He's he's great. As we'll see as the game goes on, because Vivi actually gets a lot of screen time in this game. But uh, he he's done talking to us. No matter how many times we try, right now. Sorry, Vivi. We love you. Zidane's just an idiot. <laughs> okay, Zidane. Is kind of an idiot, but not in the same way as Steiner's. Zidane's actually fairly clever, but... Different kind of idiot. Yeah. Kind. He's socially an idiot. Steiner's just a moron. Just a whore? What? Moron. Oh, I thought you... <laughs> what a dirty mind. <laughs> I was going to say, wait, I, th I thought that was Zidane, not Steiner. <laughs> Oh, fun fact, this cutscene changes depending on what you chose during these events. Mm. It's just a minor thing to point out, but indeed it does. Well, that's good, keeping it real. Yeah. And uh, Zidane can't stop thinking about her. We can go look for her, or we could do the smart thing and wait until everybody who's injured is ready to move. But, uh, 
Yeah, if you do select that like I did, you get a little bit more cutscene. Where you get a little bit of insight into Zidane's character. Zidane actually has a little more depth to him than what it seems on the surface. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I know, Lacey doesn't believe me. But he does. <laughs> What, what was it that Lacey called them when she first played the game and was talking with me about him? Uh. I want to say it was Douche Monkey. Yeah, Douche Monkey! <laughs> Which I find rather humorous. But we'll see more of the Douche Monkey in part number five. See you guys then. See you then!